Well, in this lecture, we want to talk a little bit about uh, a review of tensors, and we're going to begin here with just the notation. So hopefully you watched the previous uh, module where we talked about notation and convention uh, for vectors. I know that a uh, first-order tensor is also a vector, but in this case, I'm talking about tensors that would be second order and higher. So just like with the vectors where we, we had um, three ways to denote the vectors, we also have three ways to denote tensors. So let's talk about those first. So uh, let's just say we can denote uh, tensor um, representations, let's call that. And we actually have the exact same uh, um, types as we had with the vectors. We have direct and in this case, if sigma is my tensor, I'll denote that with just a uh, tilde underneath it to denote that it's a second order or higher tensor. So that would be just in a direct notation. Okay, we could write it in its symbolic notation, which contains sort of the most information. We could write that same tensor as sigma ij ei hat ej hat. So uh, we're going to remember or use the Einstein summation convention. So the repeated I and the repeated J, that implies a sum. So really this is actually a sum of nine terms to get to this quantity. And then if you're not, if you haven't had, like I say, a more formal tensor course, you might not be familiar with this quantity here. This is actually, uh, these are a series of dyads. So uh, think of it as uh, I and J being a row and column. And so this basically forms a a three by three matrix that gets then you add nine of those together to get to this tensor. So that would be the symbolic notation. And then uh, finally, we have just the conventional index notation. And that's just where we represent the, the components of the tensor without describing the, the basis vectors associated with it. Okay. So hopefully that's straightforward. Uh, also come back here, and uh, sometimes this dyad, uh, sometimes you'll hear it called an outer product, or also a tensor product. Okay, so just be aware that that's the case. We're not going to go into great detail about sort of the implications of that or anything like that for this class. Um, Something to remember about tensors, and this is true with, with first order tensors that would be represented as vectors, but they are tensors. What make one of the features that makes a tensor is that tensors are invariant with rotation or rotation of the coordinate system. Okay. This doesn't mean that the components of the tensor are, uh, don't, don't change. So obviously, if I choose a different coordinate system, my sigma ij components will change. Hopefully, you remember that from Moore's circle, right? If we change coordinate systems, that we could make sigma 1, 1 become sigma 2, 2, uh, depending on uh, how we rotate the coordinate system. But the idea of that is that nothing about the rotation of the coordinate system changes what the tensor is intrinsically. Okay, so tensors are invariant with rotation, and we're going to use that uh, in the next module to talk about rotation of tensors. But, but uh, in this one, we're just going to talk about some uh, real basic overviews. Okay. All right. So now uh, I'm going to define a couple uh, important tensors that we need to be familiar with. Uh, we're going to de and, and this is just by definition. So we'll just say we define uh, something called the Kronecker delta. And what we do is we define that as delta 
IJ. It's formally defined as the dot product of these basis vectors. Okay. Um, we can call this equation one if you like. So let's think about what this actually means. So when, if these are, remember these are orthonormal, so it means they're orthogonal and have a unit value of one because uh, we defined this as a Cartesian system. That's what we talked about in the last class. That's all we're going to focus on uh, for this class. Um, think about what happens if, uh, if I and J are different. So that would mean that we're going to dot um, the one direction with the two direction. So that's the projection of one in the two direction, which is going to be zero. So anytime I and J are not equal, then it's going to be... Um, the value is going to be uh, zero anytime i and j are equal basically we're asking what's the pre if i is one and j is one then that's a unit vector dotted with itself which is just one so what this winds up looking like is that sigma uh, delta one one delta two two equals delta three three equals one and then just say else delta ij equals zero. This is for i not equal to j. Okay, and if you're if you're trying to write this in matrix form, hopefully you recognize this as as in matrix representation is the identity matrix. Okay, so that's the Kronecker delta. Uh, the next quantity that's important to to define and we'll use uh, throughout is uh, something called the permutation symbol. So again, we just define it as follows. So we define the permutation symbol um, as it's it's a it's actually a third order tensor. We're not going to like I say deal with the theory of all of that, but it's epsilon i, j, k is going to be equal to formally e, i dot e, j crossed with e, k. Okay, we can call that equation two. Okay, so this is an interesting term. Uh, what does this mean? Well, Let's let's just think through it carefully. So we know that a cross product. Now that remember these are all uh, these in a Cartesian system. These are all orthonormal vectors. So if i and j are ever equal, then their cross product is going to be zero. Okay. If the the actually you can look and see that the the only time that um, that this permutation symbol can have, be, have a non-zero value is if the j and k, uh, when they're crossed, give you back the i uh, unit vector. So as a result, we can write the quantity is that um, epsilon, when it looks like 1, 2, 3, because 2 cross 3 gives us 1, epsilon... 2, 3, 1, and you can go convince yourself of this, uh, and epsilon 3, 1, 2, anytime those all give us a value of 1. Uh, now, it's also possible that ej cross ek could give us a value that is in would be in the axis of the one direction, but in the opposite direction, so we could end up with a negative 1 term. And so if we have... You can go again, convince yourself of this. Epsilon 3, 2, 1 is equal to epsilon 2, 1, 3 is equal to epsilon 1, 3, 2. That's equal to negative 1. And then all other epsilon i, j, k is equal to 0. Okay? So how many terms does this quantity have? Well, it's 3 times 3 times 3. 
So that would be uh, 27 terms in this. So I'm not going to write them all out. I only wrote the six that are sort of important, and then all the others are zero. Okay. So we can, we could, if we want to label all of those, we could label those as equation three. Okay. So those are the main features uh, of sort of the second order tensors that I want you to be familiar with. Um, in the next module, we're going to use some of these conventions to to talk about rotation of tensors. Um, and hopefully that'll give you a little bit of, of how we can use these quantities in practice.